nerve injuries of the lower extremity. We start with the tarsal tunnel syndrome. 80% of the cases are associated with a specific cause. The symptoms of the tarsal tunnel syndrome will include burning pain, numbness, tingling, and electric shock, usually around the ankle or at the bottom of the foot, the plantar aspect of the foot. You got to know about Tom, Dick, and Harry, the arrangement of the important structures at the medial side of the ankle. Here is a patient that had tarsal tunnel release, but the patient continued to have the symptoms. Why? Because there is an incomplete release of the impinging structures. Recurrence of tarsal tunnel syndrome is usually caused by inadequate release, and repeat tarsal tunnel release is usually not advisable. In general, tarsal tunnel decompression may not produce a good long-term outcome. Here is a slide that shows the cutaneous innervation of the plantar foot. You can see the saphenous nerve medially, the shorter nerve laterally. You can see the medial plantar nerve and the lateral plantar nerve and the medial calcaneal branches location. Sensation in the red area is supplied by which nerve? It should be the shorter nerve. Sensation at the arrow, the green arrow, is supplied by which nerve? It should be the saphenous nerve. A posterolateral disc herniation of L5 S1 will have decreased sensation at what? The lateral aspect of the foot. Here is a foot. Top of the foot is L5. Lateral foot is S1. Medial foot is L4. Static nerve lesion can mimic perineal neuropathy at the fibular head. Here you can see the common perineal nerve divides into deep perineal and superficial perineal nerve. The short head of the biceps femoris is innervated by the common perineal branch of the sciatic nerve. So which muscle do you test by an EMG and nerve studies to decide if the foot drop or the sciatic nerve injury occurs at the hip or at the knee level. It should be the short head of the biceps femoris. So the patient comes with a foot drop and EMG will show abnormalities in the short head of the biceps femoris. Then what is the problem? So this injury is from an injury to the sciatic nerve because of the EMG changes in the short head of the biceps. And it is not from an injury to the common perineal nerve at the fibular head. The first web space is supplied by the deep perineal nerve, which lies in the anterior compartment of the leg, and it is marked number one. Which nerve gets involved? would increase pressure in the anterior compartment of the leg. It is the deep perineal nerve, as you can see here. Which muscle is innervated by the deep perineal nerve? Perineus tertius. And you can see the origin and the insertion of the muscle. The sciatic nerve is located in the posterior compartment of the thigh, as you can see here. The superficial perineal nerve has variable course and becomes superficial to the perineus longus muscle in the distal third of the leg. And if you want to do an ultrasound to examine the nerve or to inject the nerve, you place the probe over the lateral aspect of the leg in the lower distal region. 
You can see the superficial pineal nerve supplies the top of the foot, but there is a branch, an important one, called the medial dorsal branch, and that supplies the medial side of the big toe. Extensile approach to the ankle to approach the distal tibia, like in pylon fractures, may endanger the superficial perineal nerve. While performing decompression of the lateral leg, which structure needs to be watched? Superficial perineal nerve. As you can see here, here is the location of the pes and serine. What is the nerve supply of the pes and serine? The obturator, the sciatic, and the femoral. The medial compartment of the thigh contains the obturator nerve. As you can see here, if the patient gets anterior compartment of the thigh, the saphenous nerve or the femoral nerve will be involved. As you can see here, the presence of compartment syndrome of the anterior thigh will produce parathesia wear in the medial leg and the ankle. The lateral plantar nerve is a branch of the posterior tibial nerve. The lateral plantar nerve is important because it is similar to the ulnar nerve in the hand. It supplies most of the intrinsic muscles of the foot. It supplies the Baxter nerve branch, and it can be injured during surgery, placement of a rod from the heel. Here is the lateral plantar nerve, and it gives all the interossei muscles. It is almost like the under nerve in the hand. The interossei muscles of the foot is supplied by the lateral plantar nerve. The nerve involved in heel pain, similar to plantar fasciitis, is a branch of the lateral plantar nerve. The first branch of the lateral plantar nerve is called the Baxter nerve. It is involved in chronic heel-related pain. Heel pain can be caused by many causes including Baxter nerve and plantar fasciitis. Pain associated with Baxter nerve is very similar to pain associated with plantar fasciitis. Baxter nerve contributes to about 20% of heel pain cases, and the nerve provides motor innervation to the abductor digiti minimi muscle. Morton's neuroma occurs predominantly in the third web space. It is a compression of the interdigital nerve. When you examine the patient, the area of focal and localized tenderness is in the plantar web space and not over the joints. The pain is usually localized to a specific area and it does not involve the entire forefoot. The pain is radiating distally in about 60% of the time, and numbness occurs in about 40% of the time. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.